maintenant je vais laisser la parole à monsieur l'ambassadeur de Pakistan qui nous a dit un truc ça a l'air de finir donc la com voici un autre article sur la visite à Wuhan en Asie donc Faranzien donc je pense que bon monsieur monsieur l'ambassadeur il a dit يعني لكم واسع النظر يعني ربما بدي يجي بيجي بتعليم المنفعة ونسأتك لا ترجمة إلا عن تدور ذلك. دونك تفضل سعادة سيدي. شو معنى تطرش بزاف؟ C'est à dire monsieur monsieur l'ambassadeur pour écouter ses connaissances en français sont un peu limitées mais l'essentiel y est. Anyway, I can I can speak in English, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want Arabic. <laughs> okay, first of all, I changed my mind. <laughs> the first one. Because uh, I'm coming here to talk about diplomatic efforts. And, uh, but after hearing what I heard here and the situation, I think I have to shift to another part. I will talk on two points. In fact. First point is a small history or summary for the peace process to agree all together where we are now. And then I shift to the most important part, which is Palestine and Canada. What is the situation? What is the relation with the government? What the Canadian people are doing and what we should do to improve the relation between Palestine and Canada. For the first part, let me say it, and allow me to go a little bit through history. First of all, Palestine, it's a country where the Palestinians are living. It's our country, our, uh, uh, our homeland where we uh, born with hundreds of our grandfathers there. And as uh, some of my colleagues here talk about uh, the uh, British mandate and the Balfour uh, letter for promising the Jewish uh, to have to establish their homeland or their state in Palestine. Starting from that, anyway, in 1948, by the help of the British, Palestine had been occupied, part, a big part of Palestine had been <coughs> occupied, and 750,000 of Palestinian citizens have been thrown out or fired outside the borders of historical Palestine, where you have a lot of them in Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan, and even Iraq and Egypt. Now, between 48, <coughs> after 48, after the establishing of the State of Israel, the Palestinian issue becomes a, the issue of refugees, a humanitarian issue. And what we shall do with the refugees? They created the honor one. They start uh, establishing camps, helping the Palestinian refugees to survive. For a couple of years, the issue of Palestine continued to be as a humanitarian issue. And we are not in the United Nations agenda between <coughs> 48 till 74, when <coughs> President Arafat, late Arafat, uh, address the General Assembly in the United Nations. From that date, we bring back the Palestinian issue as an item on the political agenda of the General Assembly every year. But after 48 and this <coughs> period, the Palestinians established their revolution in order to liberate their country. Two opposites in Palestine, both people, Palestinians who claim that Palestine is, is our country, 
and the coming immigrants from Europe, they claim that this is Ard of Israel, and they want to stay there. And in fact, this means the struggle started, and every part see his opposite as a risk on his existence. In the, the Jewish, the new state of Israel, they look at the Palestinians as a threat always. If something still there as Palestinians, this is, means that there will be a risk on the state of Israel. So their, their target was to eliminate Palestinians and Palestinian cause, and also they start Judaization. In English. Judaism, everything. <laughs> you know? And the other side, the Palestinians, they want to liberate their country. <coughs> and liberating, or they, they want to go back to their country and to liberate their country. This is, means also they have in their mind is to eliminate the state of Israel, to go back, you know. So this is, was the idea which have been uh, uh, controlling the, 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 the thinking of both parties, you know. Uh, the Jewish, they, when they see something Palestinian grow up, they feel a uh, threat, uh, dangerous on them. And the Palestinians, they want also to liberate their country, so they want this. Now, early in the 1970s, I think we as Palestinians, we realized that there is an international formula. Israel cannot be created without the international decision without international support, <coughs> starting from Balfour Declaration, okay, and no. then the recognition of the State of Israel from the superpowers, and then the continued <coughs> existence of the State of Israel. So this is an international formula. We start thinking, we start receiving, we receive the message that the situation it cannot be like this. And you cannot eliminate the decision of the international community of having a state of Israel. So you have to choose another way. Because of this, in early 70s, we start opening a way to contact Israel, Israelis. We start contacting the Communist Party in Israel, Raqqa, and then we start contacting some Israelis, Moroccan, Moroccan uh, Jewish, <coughs> and others. We start to create, or pave the way to create, a thinking of creating peace, to accept the other part. We start working on the ground to let the Palestinians accept the new formula that instead of fighting each other, instead, instead of eliminating each other, let us think of another way. How do we reach peace together? How we can live together, both of us Palestinians and Jewish in Palestine? Of course, after that, and I will tell you here something, all our ambassadors, in Europe who started this process of contacting the Israelis, all of them have been assassinated. But not by the Palestinians. Because the idea of this is to assassinate the idea of being closer to the peace. This is, this is exactly what happened. Now after that, this is means that we almost reach to a conviction that instead of fighting, instead of war, we have to make a historical reconciliation. Historical reconciliation 
between both nations means that I am as a Palestinian, I have to accept the existence of the state of Israel in part of historical Palestine, and to accept living side by side with the Jewish people who are living in Palestine or, or whom they became an Israelis later on, Israeli citizens. <coughs> but the historical reconciliation, <coughs> there is a condition for that. Reconciliation means if I recognize you, you have in return to recognize me. If I respect your human rights, in return you have to respect my human rights. If I respect your self-determination, your right of self-determination, you have to in return uh, accept and recognize my right of self-determination. So, we work on this, we, we continue this era of fighting or the Palestinian Revolution continues till 1993, but in part of this time there was a secret or under table a channels from the Palestinian side, connecting the Israelis, trying to open gates in the international community to see how can we contact the international community in order to help us to make this reconciliation with Israel. We start our relation with the Europeans, we start with the Americans, with everybody we try, uh, and to, to, to get the support of the international community we realize that we have to, to accept the language of the international community and, and to get the support from the international community, we have to accept their language. Their language is to have a compromise <coughs> and to have a historical reconciliation. All these things lead us to after the Gulf War lead us in 1990 to Madrid Conference. When we entered Madrid Conference, we as Palestinians, we were part of the Jordanian delegation. We are not uh, independent, and there were <coughs> the conditions on us to participate in this conference. But this is, was the first step, the first time that all Arabs and Israel sat together under the international umbrella with both Soviets and the Americans, uh, co-chair uh, co the Madrid uh, uh, conference. And from that time, you can say that the peace process already started. Now, when we find a small gap to enter this area, we start talking with Israelis. And in two, three years, till 93, we reach with the Israelis to a compromise with, which is the Oslo uh, Agreement. Now, what's Oslo Agreement? Oslo, Oslo <coughs> Agreement, it is an agreement between the State of Israel and the PLO as the sole and legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, where both parties recognize each other. And we recognize the existence of the State of Israel, and in return, Israel <coughs> recognizes the PLO and start negotiating, start contacting with them, and the Oslo Agreement was telling, and agreed on the following. The Palestinians, they can have their autonomy in West Bank and Gaza for five years. 
the first three years, Israel has to withdraw from 90% of the occupied Palestinian territories. 90% means 90% of West Bank and Gaza and East Jerusalem, the Israelis should withdraw in the first third, three years from these parts and allow the Palestinians for their self-autonomy. Uh, <coughs> and the other 10%, which represents the settlements and Jerusalem and the military bases in West Bank, this 10%, it has to be negotiated in the two years and the, the, the autonomy for five years. First three years, they have to from 90%. And the 10%, it has to be negotiated only in the two years. And in the end of the fifth year, the Palestinian state should be established in the, over the Palestinian occupied territories. Means that we are going to negotiate with Israel, and there is a percentage of swap, maybe we are going to do it, but the Palestinian state should be established on the borders of 1967 borders. This is the international legitimacy. This is the international law. This is the fourth Geneva Convention, which says that East Jerusalem, West Bank, Gaza are occupied territories, and it is applicable to Fourth Geneva Convention, means everything the Israelis <coughs> did in this occupied territories is illegal. So, we entered Oslo Agreement. We tried, the PLO went back to West Bank, Jericho, and Gaza first. And we are there, and we waited that in five years, everything will be finished, and we will have our state. <laughs> huh? We are dreaming. <laughs> Nowadays, we are now in 2017, means we are 24 years after Oslo Agreement, and we are steps back. Through this 24 years, the settlements have been tripled. The settlers became, their number now, more than 650,000 settlers in West Bank. So this is means that while we are talking with the Israelis to establish peace, they continue confiscating our land and building a new settlement, yes. uh, and nowadays it's not easy to implement the two-state solution in Palestine. While you're having all these settlements, because you cannot pass from one village to another village or from one city to another city without passing through Israeli <laughs> checkpoint. So there is no way <coughs> for the two-state solution. Plus, this is means, plus, Israel, through Oslo Agreement, they have to leave. They are not allowed to come back to West Bank, to our cities. Now the Israelis are everywhere, everywhere. If they decided to go to the house just beside the president's house, they can go. <coughs> We're still under occupation and nothing achieved. Why? Because, and this is what Shamir said, if you remember, or those who are following, in 1990, when they called the Israelis and the Arabs to Madrid conference, the Israelis, they don't want to go. But that day, James Baker, the foreign minister of the United States of America, he told Shamir, this is the phone, the phone number of the White House. Whenever you agree, call me. And it was a big fight between both of them. And then Shamir went, participate in Madrid conference. 
they don't want to participate, but they're obliged to go there. And he said it openly. I will negotiate with the Palestinians for 20 years, and I will give them nothing. And this is exactly what happened. This is exactly what happened. Nowadays, the government of Israel, the right-wing government, they are saying that we want peace and we want, we want, we want, but they are making, they are taking more land, building more, more settlements, uh, complicating the daily life of, of the Palestinians. So the, 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 the thing is there. The Israeli, yani, yani, make it like this. Ninety-three started Oslo, and here I have to say something, that late Ishaq Rabin was convinced of achieving peace, and he decided to create peace with Palestinians, and he wants that. And I remember when some events used to happen, and they make a closure on the West Bank, he has... He, w he used to inform late Arafat that we are going to do this and that, and Israel pays money for the Palestinian workers who used to go and work and didn't because of the closure. So he was totally convinced. So when they assassinate him, this is means they assassinate the peace process. They assassinate the possibility of having peace. And from that point, the direction inside Israel is changed. Now, the government of Israel is against peace. Vice versa, in, in Palestine, the government is with peace. So this is, this is the situation. We did our best as Palestinians. We stopped our struggle, uh, armed struggle with Israel. We are against violence. We stop all the violence and we condemn them. <coughs> we did our best, all exactly what the international community asking us to do. We did it, and waiting from the international community to help us in achieving this with Palestine. Means, help us means to make a real pressure on the Israeli side to accept to establish peace. Nowadays, they don't want even the two-state solution. Okay, we are there. You know. So this is, this is a small summary. Now, you have the, the, the right-wing government in Israel and they don't want to establish peace with Palestinians. They don't want to recognize or to accept establishing a Palestinian state uh, in, in Palestine. What they want, they want to continue the static quo. Means continue occupation and the Palestinians should accept to live with occupation. This is against the rules. Nobody can accept it. We as Palestinians, uh, we will continue working for peace. We will continue asking the help of the, of the international community. We, we will continue <coughs> asking our friends all over the world to help us in making real efforts to pressurize the Israeli government to accept to establish peace. Because I'll tell you something else. All what is happening in the Middle East now, all this chaos, it is only because the international community failed <coughs> to solve the issue of Palestine. This is, this is fact. This is the core of everything. If they help in solving the issue of Palestine decades ago, there will be no reason for all what is happening in, in the Middle East. If you remember when, when Saddam Hussein occupied Kuwait, and then he was confronting the international community, 
he sent his missiles to Israel. He put one condition. I am ready to withdraw from Kuwait if Israel withdraw from West Bank and Gaza. So all of them, they are using <laughs> Palestine. Because Palestine, but if you solve this, even some Islamic radicals, they also using Palestine. And they use, they, they saying, because you didn't uh, help in finding just uh, solution in Palestine, we are so and so. So the poor there solve the issue of Palestine. And then this is, means you will help in solving all the issues in the area. Now, nowadays, uh, the, Middle, the whole Middle East is, is exploring. Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, uh, uh, Yemen, Tunis, Libya. All of it because of, of the solution in Palestine. And I'm telling you, the situation is going to be deteriorating more and more if really uh, nobody helped in solving if we didn't reach a solution in Palestine. Before coming to Canada, I want to say something here. Also, it's a fact. I want to tell to everybody. The result of the struggle in Palestine, it is not because Israel is strong and we are weak. The result is not because Israel is having weapons or having uh, aircrafts and tanks and so on and so on. No. <coughs> it, is, it is because of the superpower strategic policy, which provided 100% protection for Israel, and they are not helping us in reaching a compromise. This is the importance of the international community. Our diplomacy succeeded in creating a gap between the United States and Europe. When we accept the language of the international community, we became closer to Europe. Now, let's say Europe becomes closer to us. They understand us whenever, when, when we accept their conditions, when we accept their language, they start helping us and they start boycotting Israel, and they start uh, sanction, make sanctions against Israel. But we still need these European countries who accept us, who believe that we have to have a two-state solution, we have to have peace in the Middle East. They have to make their efforts with the United States to bring the United States to the formula. And I'm telling you, if the United States tomorrow said that the peace in Palestine, it is an American interest, huh? and in 24 hours the peace will be established. <laughs> in less than 24 hours, because there is nobody in Israel who have guts to say no for America. So the question is there. The question is there. And we, we didn't succeed in Palestine, not because we are weak. We still there. We still living in Palestine. And okay, and if the Israelis, they don't want the two-state solution, they are leaving the space for one-state solution. And we don't mind. Because in the future, nowadays, we are in historical Palestine almost 50 to 50. Inside Israel, 20% of the Israeli citizens are Palestinians. So what is the future if this formula will continue? <coughs> Israel has two ways, either to be democracy, and they will lose their majority, or to be apartheid, and then they will, the whole world will stay against them. So they are making even mistakes for themselves. It's, it's quite clear. But also the international community, they should tell them that this is the fact, this is the truth. 
if um, this is what James Baker said in the last speech of, uh, uh, before uh, leaving office. He said the two-state solution, it is not for Palestinians. It is in favor of Israel. It is saving Israel. And this is fact. This is fact, because if Israel accepts peace now, they, we will recognize, <coughs> and the, the, the whole community, the whole world will recognize the reconciliation between Palestinians and Israelis, and they will accept, they will, their country will uh, continue. Otherwise, the struggle will be open, and the result is going to be depend on the new facts will be the coming over on, on the wall. I finished my first part, let me come to Canada. <laughs> Canada, they didn't recognize Palestine. And we don't have any kind of relation, political relation, <coughs> with Canada. Okay, it's a clear telephone, I it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Secret part. We don't have any kind of political relation with Canada. Political relation. And the other one too? Yeah. yeah. 